Hello everyone. We are the students of group 13 and today we are going to talk about a project that we did as a part of our course CL246 heat transfer in our fourth semester at IIT Bombay. Our topic is enhancement of cooling system in automobiles. These are the students which are part of our group. So a brief overview. Almost all of us use automobiles on a regular basis and are aware of the heating of the engine that takes place. But not many of us are aware of the importance of the engine and its cooling system in the functioning of automobiles. Through this project, we have tried to draw the attention of the audience towards the cooling system's importance as well as tried to find out new ways to enhance it through the knowledge of heat transfer gained in this course. Let's begin by the user story. When the automobiles are in use, then the engine heats up. The heating up of the engine is a matter of concern. For the proper functioning of the automobile, the engine needs to be cooled down to an optimum temperature. This is where the cooling system comes into play. All of us must have heard about the accidents that happen because of the failure or damage of the engine. This is what drove us to research on the cooling system and the ways to enhance it so that we can increase the life of the engine as well as prevent the accidents because of engine failure. Now, as I said, we need an optimum temperature for the functioning of the engine. That is, neither too hot nor too cold. Let us go through what happens in either of the cases. Overheating may result in the melting of the engine parts and finally the engine ceases while overcooling results in the shutdown of the entire engine system. We have tried to come up with a cooling system which deals with the upsurge in thermal efficiency and less compact sized radiator. The technical problem that we catered to is as follows. A liquid coolant, water plus antifreeze, with density rho flows in a cuboidal aluminium tube with height ht, depth d and length l with velocity v. It comes in at the inlet with a maximum temperature of t in and exits at temperature t out. The tube is attached to n identical, identical rectangular cuboidal fins, each with height hf, depth d and thickness tf. Air at temperature t air is being blown from behind the fins, which gives it a forced convection heat transfer coefficient of h. Find the rate of heat transfer q from the coolant to the air. The second thing that we need to find is the temperature of the coolant outlet and the third thing is to suggest changes to maximize q and minimize t out. The rough estimates that we took of the unknowns are listed down. The schematic diagram and the control volume are as follows. The left one is the schematic diagram for the engine and the right one is the control volume that we have considered. Now, the next is modes of heat transfer. In this technical problem that we have chosen, various modes of heat transfer are involved. Most of them, most of the time, only one mode is selected and worked upon. But in our case, we have identified two major modes of heat transfer, that is conduction and convection. As you can observe from the diagram, heat conduction takes place from the coolant to the tube walls and hence further from the tube towards the fins in both the directions. Whereas heat transfer through convection occurs in the coolant used in the heat exchanger pipes. Also, the fans provide air circulation which leads to forced convection. Radiation is generally neglected but can also be included but it is since it is negligible compared to the heat transferred through the other modes, hence we are neglecting it here. Therefore, conduction and convection are the two main modes of heat transfer in the problem that we have considered. Now, some of we have, while solving the technical problem, we have made several assumptions. So as we already stated, uh, heat transfer through radiation is neglected because it is negligible as compared to other modes of heat transfer. In solving the technical problem, we have chosen to solve transient state of working is not considered 
that is the parameters on which the properties of the components are dependent won't change with the passage of time in other words the rate of time with respect to time of basic measurements like uh, temperature pressure etc is zero which is known as steady state condition also to avoid unnecessary difficulty and errors in heat transfer calculations we don't assume any thermal contact resistance anywhere in the system which mainly arises because of unavoidable imperfect fittings in the practical model design we already mentioned that the physical properties don't change with temperature in steady state conditions uh, the wall thickness of the tube is assumed negligible for the ease of calculations in the problem that we have catered to there are some knowns and some unknowns consider the hypothesis that we can take the control volume to be the entire diagram that we had shown earlier so overall heat and mass balance must be satisfied if the hypothesis is true the things that we know are dimensions of the geometry of all the flat and curved surfaces present in the system second thing temperature of the coolant at the inlet of the pipe that is t in and also the temperature of the air third thing the volume rate at which the coolant flows in the tubes and fourth thing the values of the heat transfer coefficients as well as the physical properties of the materials involved all these quantities are known to us but the ones which are unknown and we need to find out are as follows the first thing is the rate of heat flow q along and across the tubes the temperature of the coolant at the tube outlet that is t out we proceed to solve for these e quantities using the given solution methodology now the temperature in the tube varies in the x direction while heat transfer occurs from the fins and the exposed area of the tube in y and z directions we have divided the tube into n sections where each section contains one fin we have taken half of the fin on each side of the tube in the control volume of a section assuming that the temperature of the fluid is constant in the ith section ti we will work with this control volume in the first part of our solution and then using tn using an iterative in uh, iterative finite difference method with a with a code in matlab now uh, we have assumed that theta i is equal to t i minus t infinity and the temperature of the surface t s is assumed to be t i plus t air divided by 2 for the fins that uh, for the fins we have taken from literature the equation that is mentioned over here for the exposed surface that is excluding fins uh we use the relation the second relation that is mentioned here that is q is equal to 2 times h into d into w minus t multiplied by theta i divided by 2 thus the total heat transfer rate out will be the sum of these two values now inside the tube the heat transfer cools down the fluid as this equation which reads as q i in is equal to dm by dt into cp into t i minus t i plus 1 is equal to dm by dt into cp into theta i minus theta i plus 1 equating the heat loss outside with the cooling effect inside we get theta i plus 1 is equal to a under root of theta i plus b into theta i we iterate this to find q n and subsequently find q total out is equal to q by using the code in matlab the temperature profile we obtain the temperature profile for two different materials one is aluminium and the second is carbon foam the temperature profiles across x direction for aluminium that we obtained is shown by this graph while the temperature profile obtained for carbon foam uh, using matlab is uh, the graph is shown here the results that we obtained are after during the doing the numerical calculations with the given data the results that we obtain are as follows with aluminium as the material we get t out is equal to 96.6 degree celsius and q is equal to 1064.5 watt per second while if we use carbon foam as the material 
we get T out is equal to 94.34 degrees Celsius and Q is 1778.8 watt per second. Now, what can we infer from the solution? The inference from the solution that we draw are the heat transfer is enhanced by 67% by using carbon foam material. Also, a carbon foam radiator is 18% lighter than aluminium which will be effective for saving fuel for the car. Hence, a carbon foam is a better solution. So conclusion is this, the hypothesis of using carbon foam or using nanofluids can be accepted as they will change parameters like safety. So this was our presentation. Thank you.